child. Sorry about that. Was. <laughs> Guess I'm kind of hyped up on sugar today. <laughs> Tony, are you ready? Over there. Sorry about that. It's uh, three o'clock. Wait, 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 Commissioner Pickington. We'll wait just a few minutes. I had Sam here just a second ago. He's here. All right, we're going to call our meeting to order on July 7th at 3 o'clock. Um, this is our emergency board meeting. The invocation today will be led by Commissioner Goddard and the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Pickens. Would you all please stand? Thank you. Please bow our heads. Lord, thank you for this opportunity that we get to gather here. It's not always possible in a lot of countries, Lord. We just ask that you give us wisdom, help us to make good decisions for our county, help us to do the things that I know that need to be done, even if they're tough. Lord, we do ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioners. We appreciate that very much. Would like to say to the audience, um, if you'd like to speak today, please fill out a blue card. The blue cards are located on the back wall. Uh, and if you'll bring them up to Tony, she will take care of them from there. And then I'll receive them at that point. And during the public comment, we will have you go first. Um, would like to go ahead and ask uh, Stacy Papel, give us a little guidance on where we're going today and this meeting. And also to explain that we're going to, yeah, we're fine on the agenda. So go right ahead, Ms. Papel. Good afternoon. Uh, forgive me if I babble a little bit. I've had very little sleep. Just shut me down if I start going blah, 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 okay. blah. <laughs> Last night, I sent you an email. And attached to the email was a balanced general fund budget, both revenues and expenditures. 47460203 dollars I balanced it using a millage rate of 9.8945, $100,000 of reserves, as discussed in a previous workshop. A million. Yeah, a million. It's, it's OK. Please chime in, because okay. I'm tired. And $600,000 of contingency, which helps to offset using that million dollar of reserves. Um, it is balanced based on an insurance contribution that you have not yet approved. And I have several scenarios of insurance to talk about which will play in different ways in this budget. Um, since completing this budget, when Mr. Manning went over it this morning, he asked me a question, and we discovered $240,000 that can be freed up out of the expenditure budget, or an offsetting revenue can be posted on the revenue side, but it, it gives us $240,000 to work with. Where was that at? It was in Mosquito Fund. I think it was a number that Mr. Gass put in for Zika that if we had to spend it, we would get reimbursed. And so it doesn't need to be in there and or the revenue needs to be in there one way or the other. I saw that. That was, yeah, okay. I missed that. Tired. I have distributed the revenue and the expenditure budgets. I don't know in what order you want to go, if you want to ask questions about the budget first, or if you want to talk about insurance first. I'd like to go through the budget first because I think that was the call that we had the other day. We couldn't determine the insurance fund until we went through the budget to see if there was monies available to set those rates, and that's what I understood at. 
I have a question for you. When you sent the email out, you said the budget has a $600,000 of contingency fund. Is that additional to what our estimated fund balance will be this year? Two sides of the coin. We had $6.2 million at right. the end of the FY16 budget right. audit. We budgeted to use $4.5 million, of which I do not think we will use the entire $4.5 million, but we'll use some of it. That leaves budgetarily $1.7 million. Right. In a discussion at a workshop a week and a half ago, I think, we talked about plugging in $1 million worth of reserves on the revenue side. Since this budget has been cut quite a bit, I recommended to you a higher than normal contingency. And in using a million dollars worth of cash balance forward, if we have $600,000 worth of contingency, then if we don't use that contingency, it flows right back into fund balance. So. I think it, it just levels the playing field a little bit. Okay, that answers my question. All right, commissioners, any questions so far? All right, oh, if yes. not, let's start with the revenue then. As I said, the ad valorem is based on 9.8945. It is an increase. Um, down in taxes, permits, fees, assessments, um, you can see that um, the occupational licenses or business tax has gone away. There, there's very little of note in the revenues. There, we get them from the state. The only revenue we have not yet received is the communication tax revenue. So my estimate is in there. Um, knock on wood, last year all my estimates were close but low. So hopefully we win a few dollars when that revenue does come in from the state. When you get to page three, I have a question. On Certainly. That. It might be easier just to ask me questions because we've been through this once. On page three, um, Account number 335.16, racing monies. Those are paramutual funds received from the state. Every county gets the same amount. We get that every year. It's a no strings attached revenue source for the county. Okay, that's $446,500. It is. And that will come up again in the expenditure budget because in prior years we've given a little to over 200,000 of that to the school board and I have balanced the budget without that going to the school board. Okay. If I might Mr. Chair, I know one of the one of the questions that that I've heard in the last few days was the question about um, our honorable tax collector indicated um, last week about um, receipts from from tax certificate sales and there was a question about whether or not that is included in these figures and where so I just uh, if I could just ask Ms. Papel to clarify that that yeah. is included in our estimated revenues for fiscal year 17 and it is taken into account in whether or not I would even advise budgeting the one million dollar of carry forward it's just all part of the estimated revenues for fiscal year 17 and estimated expenditures for fiscal year 17 and I have not had time to do a line by line by line by line year end estimate on the expenditure side where I have on the revenue side so it plays in but it doesn't change the FY18 budget all right, so in answer to that question then, it's money we already budgeted expecting to receive, correct? 
actually it assisted in making us whole because our collections were down. And so it helped to make us whole overall in that tax line. Um, as all revenues, some come higher than budget, some come lower than budget, we were running a bit behind budget in that number until that. Okay. But it was still expected income. We always, we always budget at 95% and hope for better, right. and it, it made us a little better. How much of a little better do you need? A uh, couple hundred Hold thousand. on, and I'll pull up my revenue estimates. I think the, the other issue was there was, there was a, a larger hole that we had to fill for 2017 um, in uh, Medicare expenditures than was anticipated, and part of that is going to, to, to cover some unanticipated um, expenditures in that line as well, which is about $500,000. Correct me if I misstated that, Ms. Popel. I didn't hear all of it, but I what, what I heard you say sounded is, right. It was covering the Medicare. We hold. did under budget in the Medicaid line, Medicare line, in the expenditure budget by $500,000. Was that an unfunded mandate from the state, or was that? Just it was an unfunded man. It is an unfunded mandate from the state, but it also was under budgeted. Okay, I'm just getting the file up now. Our budget for this year for ad valorem taxes was $29,107,952. And even including the recent tax sales, I still have forecast us coming in just under that. Come up to the microphone, Ms. Myers. Thank you very much. The Myers tax collector. Um, what we have here is the five years, the, the prior five years ending with this current tax year because all of those dollars are in except for one distribution. So um, you have a five-year average of collections and that might have you, give you some good information for that you'll find useful. So I'll pass it out. I make the one caveat. The final column is the current year we're in, the 2016-2017 year, there is one distribution that will come out in this month to you, and it'll be roughly 250000 So with that two fifty, the general fund contribution will be at 100000 Okay. Puts us just slightly under budget. Just slightly under budget. Okay. $2. Well, we were twenty nine one oh seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that mean, difference really isn't material to my forecast. Okay, with, with that being done, we had heard in a workshop. It helps, yeah. With that being done, we had heard in a workshop that we could possibly see a 2.54% increase in property values that might have a $800,000 number attached to that. What was the final number that Mr. Parker gave to you? Oh, well, thank you, buddy. Um, yeah. Oh, did I go ahead of myself? I can take it in any order. I'm sorry. I apologize. Thank you. The number that we multiply our millage rate against this year is three billion four hundred and ninety one million seven hundred and ninety five five thirty two. And 
And that's up from last year? It is up from last year. Hold on a sec. Let me go to that file. There's something wrong with the formula in that file. It is um, nearly a million up, definitely more than 800,000 up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good mm -hmm. news. I mean, you see a million dollar value increase. Yes. That's good. That was one of the 4.5 we needed. All right, commissioners, are there any other questions on the income side of the equation? All right, so, so we would be seeing, based on your balanced budget, increase in mills from 9.0914 to 9.8945. Based on Baseline. the budget balanced as it is at this moment. Okay. Well, not taking into consideration the two hundred and forty thousand right. dollars, which could reduce millage. It could go towards insurance. It, your pleasure. How are we funded? Are did we um, put the correct number in for the Medicare distribution this year? So yes, we did. We, we got the number directly from the state. Okay, so that number is plugged in now, currently. That's plugged in now, correctly. Okay. All right, let's go through the expenses part then. All right, on the first page you have the commi county commission budget. Uh, I do not have commissioner pay from the state yet the bottom line in personal services reflects FRS increases um, and insurance unknown and everything else is pretty much on par in operating expenses up about fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, Five hundred of that's travel. You've got ups and downs there, just based on trends. You do have dues and memberships in there. We talked about that at a workshop. Hold on, let me pull that file up, and I can tell you which ones. Well, no, that's revenue. Speaking on dues and memberships, uh, did you receive that letter from Florida Association of Counties that their due structure might be changing and going up? No. Okay. They said they sent it out a few months back, but I didn't recall, and I told them I didn't recall seeing that letter. There was one letter that came said something about based on population that didn't have a rate. Okay. You may be talking about that one. Yeah, I think they're still trying to finalize it. The 45000 in dues and memberships includes the small county coalition fee. So what's the breakdown on those FAC and... I don't have the breakdown. Some of it's in... Some of your memberships are in different places. And I did not have time to prepare a list. 
All right, well, that's un Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Liable. That's something I really wanted to look at, but I, I understand the budget crunch. But, you know, $45,000, $45,000. That's right. And uh, that's just one of yeah. many things, areas I thought that we should take a hard look at. Uh, services that we're receiving, particularly with FAC and some of the others, I, I, I really question. I have wanted to question them for years, and I still do. We, we do have the opportunity between the budget that you were presented on Tuesday and the budget that we pass in September to make many more cuts. I would like to make a formal request to break these out, no matter what category you've got them in. Yeah. Corral them and bring them to us. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll go on record. I mean, I stood up at convention and I told the board that they were talking about raising rates and I said, it might come down where we can't afford to write the check. Because if it comes down to closing a fire ambulance station or paying dues, I know where this commissioner is going. Well, this this budget is is based on not closing any ambulance stations. I hear you. Yeah. But I'm with Commissioner Liable. We need to look at these. You know, we can come back another day. But well, I can you know. through my experience. Um, there, we have not scrutinized this, maybe ever. Right. I, I can vaguely remember a conversation some eight years ago, but we've not really put the microscope on it. Yeah, and I we agree, need to. I agree with both of you. We really need to look, see, you know, what, what we're paying, what we're getting out of it. No question. Mm -hmm. But if we'll go through this budget and pick out other things, not just a dues structure, I think we can find quite a bit of revenue here that could help. I really do. So I encourage well, you to look further. On that note, the next thing you want to look at is uh, towards the bottom of the page, 001, 2101, 519, 3101, professional services. I do have that breakdown because I gave it to you in a workshop. Those professional services are Southern Strategy, 36,000, the Gabaton Group, 19,980, Accent Reporting, 325, and neighbors Giblin and Nickerson in excess of 8,000. Who's Accent again? Accent reporting, that was $325, and I'm not absolutely sure who they are. And neighbors and Gibbons was? A little, it was 8,000 at the time I looked it up, now, which was back in a workshop. Okay. Now I'm gonna go on record now and say, you know, I don't mind Southern strategies because I think they do try to bring home the goods for us from Tallahassee, but I was really disappointed in Josh Gabaton. I'll tell you that point blank, who had no conversation with our legislator, Ted Yoho, before he came to Putnam County. And it bothered me that he did not do that. So that's just me. Well, but as a board, if I don't see any results from the- You guys want to direct us to fire him. No, I, th I think we only have to give him, I haven't seen the contract, but probably only 30 days notice. Well, no more than 60 probably. Uh, you know, I think today's conversation, we are itemizing these out and every commissioner can bring their concern to you and we'll address it at a, at a public meeting, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, as she indicated, you know, we've got time once we, we can get a, a further breakdown on these to kind of mm -hmm. go through some more of the real fine details between now um, and September to, to kind of weed out some of those um, areas that you may want to weed out. Do we want to flag them today? I don't want I'm to I'm flagging them on my copy. Okay. okay. <laughs> we'll do that and then it deserves a whole nother discussion. Because right. I don't think we're gonna resolve it between now and Tuesday when I bring you the balanced budget. No. I think that, that we have then time between Tuesday and the first meeting in September to to take whatever millage you set and do our darndest to reduce it right okay okay yeah, i like that yeah let's keep the conversation i'm going at the three thousand foot level <laughs> absolutely today all right well yeah. then i'm just gonna speak to what jumps out at me and you stop me and speak to anything you've had flagged mr goddard uh, commissioner goddard I just have a quick question down Certainly. here on risk management. That's the one I was going to next. Okay, thank you. Uh, our insurances have gone up. And 
our ins the cost of our insurance is spread throughout the funds, but a lot of our buildings and a lot, lot of the things that we insure are general fund. Why don't we do that through general services? I mean, they're the holders of our, our buildings. They're the... Because we do it in the risk management fund. And then... So this is with Florida League of Cities, correct? Through the Florida Association uh, of Counties. Well, we have a list of insurances about 12 lines, 15 oh, lines long. Oh, okay. This is all of our insurance. This is this is a com this is the general okay. funds combo hit for a myriad of insurances. Is the time got to bid on some of those? Some of those are with private carriers. I know that. I know that we have since Mr. Manning's come on board and I've come on board and Ms. Dillon's come on board. We've really tried to eat that elephant as many bites as a time as we can to, to get everything bid and centralized and so we can have, you know, economies of scale and keep, keep ourselves out of trouble and. Well, we could go with higher deductibles and some of our stuff might not need to have insurance placed on it. I think Mr. Leary was very, very, very frugal and conservative in, in his attack on insurance. So I, I don't think we're overinsured. Okay. No, and we, we had this exercise about five years ago where we took some of our uh, GL off some of the facilities and self-insured them basically. Yeah. And we probably should do it again, but um, we, we did do this. Our general liability, you mean our property? Uh, both. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, on some of them reduced them, yeah. We did. The, the insurance could, the, the, that, ugh, tired, sorry. The, um, that whole fund and the cost of all of those insurances and the allocation among all the other funds could stand a good hard look, but there wasn't time in this budget preparation season. Uh, my only concern on that, I see, is, you know, it raised 330000 I knocked it up years. last year and knocked it up this year. Yeah. <laughs> that the fund was negative. Uh, I think the fund's negative right now. Thank you. Okay, looking down. I don't see anything that jumps out on me in the second page. Anybody on the second page? No. The third page is almost empty. Slow down. The third page has ride solution. Uh, could, we, could we back up? I did have a question. Okay. On the medical examiner, that's something that we're required by the state. Yes, and we share costs with two other counties, I believe. I have not received a letter from them this year asking us for more or less money, so right now it's the same as the previous year. But it has almost tripled, you know, since sixteen seventeen. They added another physician. Okay, you were going to talk about ride solution. Just that I left it in. We talked about that at a workshop. Our um, our citizens rely on that. Down towards the bottom of the page in grants and aid, there's the tax increment to uh, Palatka and to Crescent City. They're, they have community development districts. Or no, CRAs. They have CRAs. And we're obligated to pay that. That's my best estimate at this time. Oh, okay. The next page you have the clerk's funding request, as well as the transfer to the economic development fund and the transfer to another transfer to the risk management fund. The risk management's broken up into two pieces in each fund. Ready to move to county attorney's budget? 
We've been through it once and there's nothing of note in this budget. <laughs> County administrator's budget. Less than last year. That could be different if we hire a county administrator that we could see some changes on that, couldn't we? Based on what the board does. So we're gonna have to either stay within budget on these numbers or. What kind of changes are you talking well, about? Well, let's say salaries or benefits. Well, you guys set the salary and I budgeted at the top salary. I budgeted for a car allowance. Okay. And I budgeted for my position and Yvonne's position and then I budgeted what to do with Yvonne's position after she retires, and I budgeted what to do with the two other positions, but I did it very loosely so that whoever you hire will have some freedom. Okay. If whoever you hire doesn't like the direction that I took it, and I took it, by the direction I took based on discussions that we've had. Okay, so we did budget at the higher amount the top of the range that you suggested. I'm all the way to page nine. Yeah. And I don't see anything to talk about on page nine. There was nothing on seven and eight audience. Okay. And I don't see anything to talk about on 10. And I don't see anything to talk about on 11. The state attorney lowered the budget Other without budget. being asked. Okay. Well, didn't you send them a letter? Or no, they just did it. They yeah. just did it. Public defender, nothing to talk about. Guardian ad litem, I reduced that budget a little bit. They don't make a request for us, we just send them their budget. Okay. Drug court, this is the budget that they requested. I did not cut it. Court technology, that's basically swipe cards, I think. Nothing for supervisor. Info technology. You see an increase in their personal services. We discussed this in a workshop. Uh, position from planning and one position from emergency service, actually two in a span of control, two positions from emergency services are here but 20% of five um, PC techs are being charged to the fire fund. But for span of control, they've been moved here. Okay. Well, we're seeing really good things happening in that yeah. department. And well, and, and you had a plea from all of the constitutionals that we not harm IT, if anything, to bolster them. Right. If you could also touch on the communication services under that. I will. Um, because of centralizing, the, the, I don't know if Mr. Stender's spoken with you, but he's department by department uh, reducing the cost of cell phones in the county, and he's budgeted for that here, and there should be reduction in communication costs throughout the rest of the budget. He and I sat and line by line went through everybody's communication budget and shaved money off because he's paying for it out of his budget. Well, he's got a good handle on it, no He doubt. does. I can't speak highly enough of him. Commissioner Goddard? Is that the communication services that you're, you're yes. looking at here? Yes. Okay, because I know it went up substantial, but that's For good why. reason. Okay, okay. But the other departments have went been cut down. back. Yes. Uh, so that compensates for that. Repair and maintenance, though, went up a little bit, quite a bit, too. 
Um, he keeps a very detailed spreadsheet. I do not have it with me, but he keeps during- Keeps a detailed spreadsheet? Oh, of course he does. <laughs> Bob, you know, of, I love Of you. every penny that he spends out of that line, a lot of it's maintenance agreements. Bob, I do that because I love spreadsheets. I just know that. But. So, so, so you will know that every penny of that line is justified. I'm on to human resources. You see a decrease in personal services costs because I moved Marjorie's position and 10% of Ann's position to the insurance fund. Everything else is as needed. The uh, 55920 down in transfer. That was something that we were considering putting in the insurance fund and after a discussion in a workshop, you said not to, so you said to leave that in the general fund. So I added it to her budget. That is the county's contribution to retiree insurance. And at some point, I do recommend that it be moved to the insurance fund because every single person that retires from the county, not just the BOCC, so paid out of any fund or court money or what have you, has the benefit of a health insurance supplement. And right now the general fund is bearing 100% of that burden, but we're talking about probably a small percentage of that 55, 920 isn't general fund. So it's, it's not material enough to dicker about. But if, if I put my really legalist CPA hat on, it ought to be in the insurance fund. I have a question now. We're not giving, we're not increasing salaries right now in that department, are we? There is, I wouldn't do that. Okay. And that'll be up to uh, the new county well, administrator. I know we were talking and we have a meeting coming up about our um, next year our insurance fund and hiring a person that could help us through that and I just didn't want to get lost in that that's all mm -hmm. okay hiring personnel or a consultant consultant well, I hope yeah. Consultant. Yeah. 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 yeah let me back up to that 10 percent you were just talking about yes um, what was your rationale behind that because part of Ann's job is also insurance benefits she supervises Marjorie so some portion of her job should be allocated to the insurance fund as well. Okay. All of Marjorie's job is insurance benefits, well, predominantly. And most of Lori's job is, is hiring. And Barbara's job is the insurances and Barbara's salary is all in the risk fund. Well, I'm wondering why Marjorie's is not too. Well, Marjorie's is in the insurance fund. There's two, there's a risk fund and an insurance fund. Okay. And I've got Marjorie's in the insurance fund and Barbara's in the risk fund. It was at the recommendation of John Jones that I do it this way. And 10% is like the industry number? It seemed, you, you know, it's, Anne spends a lot of her time on union, a lot of her time on employee issues, but she does spend a portion of her time on benefits especially when we get to, you know, when we're going through this part of it every year. Okay. I mean, I didn't ask her to record all of her hours and then compute how many hours were benefit related uh, divided by total hours. I, I swagged it. Are we ready to go to general services buildings? I'm there. We cut general services budget last year. I say we did, but it looks the same. Um, we burned through most of this doing things like air conditioners and roof repairs and 
pumps and I mean this is where everything gets paid out of Electric electricity cleaning this is a, a, a big cost center and Melissa's doing a good job yes she is there she is. Well, a lot there, to take care of. There's a lot of buildings in this county. There is. And we don't have a big staff. We have a small staff that does a big job in almost every department. No, in every, every department. department. Yeah, I agree. Um. Welfare administration, page 22. That's where the Medicaid hospitals line was under budget. You can see the actuals throughout the years and then the budget that I inherited. Well, it's going to be 1.5 million this year, not the million that was budgeted. And next year, it's going to be 1.557137. But this budget reflects that full amount. That full amount. On grants and aids. Down Certainly. 82-18, Swanee River Economic Council. Those are the elder, elderly meals. Meals on wheels? Yes. Okay. Well, that's not all they provide. But. Yeah. Well, and up uh, Baker Act Transport, you know, we have some, the, the um, Stuart Marchman has that grant in, and if anything ever comes of that, then we could hope to reduce the Baker Act Transport line. But we're not there yet. But it's in the works. Yeah, that would be significant savings right yes. there. Yes. And travel. So, Mr. Chairman, what was your concern on Swanee River? I just saw their name. Just want to know what they did for us, that's all. Okay. Nothing on page 23. Page 24 is the purchasing side. You see a reduction in operating expenses, an increase in personal services, but that's mostly related to retirement. Veteran services on the next page. Again, retirement and a reduction in operating costs. Planning and development. Now here's where I have trouble keeping it straight. So I'm going to talk about planning and development and codes and inspections all at once. And then we'll see how it, it shakes out in the budget. One position was unfunded. Another position they asked to give up during the year to and to have uh, one of their employees assume extra duties with for a little extra pay one position they gave up to IT and one position has moved later in between their two two of, of their three cost centers so you're going to see an overall reduction between the three pages not including animal control but I can't remember which is which. So just taken as a whole, there's a reduction in, per in personal services costs. There's also a reduction in operating costs. The only thing of note that's radically different as far as an increase in those three pages is planning has asked to take two of their codes people and train them in-house with the cost of webinars that they'll watch in-house 
to train them to be inspectors so that we can home grow some inspectors with the intent that they'll stay because we're having trouble, we have trouble getting codes people and inspections pe people. Are we gonna raise the salaries? Slightly, but that's incorporated in as well. No, I encourage that. Yeah. We, ha we haven't kept people because we don't pay them anything. Well, it's, it's incorporated. It, um, they sat down with me mm -hmm. and they told me what they needed and I plugged it in. And I've done it since we talked about this in a workshop. So this is, and it includes an increase in training in one of the training lines. It's a good move. For the cost I, of I, the webinars. I'm encouraging to go far enough to truly accomplish the mission. Well. But I'm more interested to know what you did with animal control. I didn't <laughs> hurt them in a bit. <laughs> animal control, um, the increases are related to um, the life and health insurance number was low for the position count. Retirement went up. Um, it's not radically different. Uh, operating expenses were decreased slightly. Part of that was communication expense. Looks like they've had an overall reduction, though, in the department, haven't they? Of about fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. What is professional services? Vets. Okay. Could that be outside veterinarians and stuff? That's a large part of it. And then you've got, uh, who else? We had the animal behavioral specialist. I don't know if there was a cost associated with it. I can't break this down, but they I had. I think you know more about it than I do. Yeah, we um, had a, a Brian's probably here. Is he? Yes. Mr. Hammonds, would you please come forward? Primarily vets. Is what it is, um, vet and medical care for animals who have a problem or outbreaks of disease at the complex, whatever we have to have done. Um. On that audit, did we incur any expense there, Brian? Oh, yes, we incurred expense. So that's um, reflected here in the professional yes. services? Uh, to the extent that it, we required professional services to in that. But uh, again, it's primarily vets and medical care as we, as we need to. And again, that just depends on flow of animals in and out. Mr. Hammonds, it looks to me like the biggest hit was in personal services. And right off the top of my head, I can't seem to find what the, where that big hit came from. On personal what, services went up. My adjusted budget for 1617 says 147,600. And for animal control? Animal control. 1718 says 123,200. Do you have that, Mr. Hammond? I can see the numbers. Uh, we did not mm -hmm. request less there. Problem with animal control, again, is just cost containment because you never know how many animals you're going to have in and not dealing with them is not an option. The the sixteen seventeen budget commissioner you've we experienced that big uh, hoarding case not once but twice large animals small animals the 40 something chows 50 something chow dogs. Uh, uh, all total I think there were about 65 animals. Then we had the horses we had over 21 horses that year through the facility. Alpacas? <laughs> yes, you name it, we've had it. Four, four tropical birds. That's what you're seeing there. Yeah, I see that. That was a spike, for okay. sure. All right. He was looking at operating expense. 
I know they're struggling. Y'all are struggling out there. And L let me just say one thing. The operating expenses are misleading somewhat there. Uh, we do, we have had a lot of help from charities and we are extremely thankful for that. I'm not sure what we would have done without them. Various rescues and some charitable help from Doc Tony and some other individuals. They have been very helpful to us. Is that attorney, physician on TV? That, yes, sir. Yeah. He and come, he Jen come. from Pitt Sisters also yes. should be mentioned. Just and, one. and a lot of other rescues, too. Yeah. Good deal. Well, we need it. There's no doubt. So. How are you all doing out there with the heat? I know I'm going to get off topic for just a second, but I, you know, it's hot to me out there. And those poor animals, I don't know how, you know. We're doing the best we can. We have fans, and we do everything we can for them and keep the breeze moving as best as possible. But we've made certain upgrades out there over the last couple of years, but we're still working on it. It's hot out there. It's hot. Bless the heart. Thank you, Mr. Hammonds. We appreciate it. Ms. Papel, continue. Are we done with animal control? Yeah. I believe we are, yes. Okay. It, it, the brunt of the decrease in operating expense and animal control was communication services. Okay. That was the biggest cut. All right, that answers. Emergency services, personal services went down. That's because two positions came out and went over to IT. Although IT is not is only funding 80 percent of five, it used to be one person was funded a couple of years ago, half in the fire tax fund, half here. Last year, I think all here. Now back the equivalent of one position in the fire tax fund. But the decrease here is because positions moved to IT. Oh, and Mr. Rowe May's position came out of here. He's half in between um, fire and half ambulance services. Right. Um, nothing else really of note here. Not really, I, I left in the vehicle that they asked you for. Okay, I see it on page 31. On page 31, the $35,000, I did not cut that. During the budget discussions, uh, I didn't feel like you directed me to. So that's up to you guys. Well, I've been let, I mean, it was relayed to us that this vehicle, their their vehicle, was ancient, dilapidated, was awful. Broke. Yeah, it yeah. was broke. I mean, I don't think we have a choice here. Is what I'm saying. What is this vehicle? Do you remember? No. Expedition, I believe. I don't remember. Is it something that the board could consider purchasing on a BPP if necessary to free those funds? Yes, up? you could purchase this out of BPP. Um, when that was mentioned in the workshop, you weren't inclined to go that way. But yeah, well, it is allowable. It's an allowable BPP. Purchase. Let's tag it for a further okay. discussion, too. I Mosquito control, here's where I missed the first line. I saw that. I had it lined two hundred and forty thousand dollars. I meant to either take that out or put two hundred and forty in and I totally missed that because when I cut this budget last year, it was like I messed up the whole grant. So I've just been flipping past that budget this year. Well, I was going to ask that we have a three hundred thousand dollar, three hundred fifty thousand dollar budget, but a thousand for pesticides and insecticides. That that is Zika money. There's a that. Zika program, Sorry. but Sorry. should 
we cross into that area where we qualify for the Zika program, we will have costs, but we will also have revenue. Right. And we can amend the budget at that time. So that 240 can go. Okay, while we're talking mosquito control, my phone is blowing up about mosquitoes. I know the whole county, I mean, I can't even walk outside at night. I don't know how we control all this, you know, but just let you know my phone is blowing up. So I'm sure everybody in the room is feeling the heat of mosquitoes. I smell like off most evenings. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, it's kind of an act of nature. 33 inches of rain in one month. That's right. That's right. Same with the roads and the grass. I mean, tag yep. it for discussion, but I'm not sure what the answer is. Yeah. All right. EMS? Yes, ma'am. Um, increases are related to retirement. Operating costs went down. The building construction or improvement, if I am not mistaken, is um, one of the ambulance stations. It's been budgeted, maybe this is the third or fourth year in a row, and it's, we haven't had, at the end of, we ran out of year and didn't do it. It's, one of them, I think floor home is pretty, in pretty poor shape. Again, here's another spot where we could flag this and we could move it to BPP. I'm all the way to parks now. Page 36. Parks. Disregard that really large number Ooh. in the top line. That was a departmental typo. $36 million. <laughs> <laughs> Angie. <laughs> no. We got some great parks going on. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. we will flag that number for sure. <laughs> in doing budget cuts, Ms. Wisnot, rather than have me cut her budget, she offered up very, I was very impressed. She offered up her recommended cuts rather than just have me do the cuts. I want to say I, I admire that. I mean, not a lot of department heads did that, but you really broke it down where we could understand what was going on. And she gave a lot of thought to it. Huh? She gave a lot of thought to she it. She really she did. did, and it's greatly appreciative and didn't go unnoticed by me. So now, with that said, you know, I know our kids are primary and our recreation is important. So, you know, if, if we have to go back and relook at it, we need to do that. But, but I feel confident that you made decisions you made based on what was good for Putnam County. So I appreciate what you did. Thank you. I, you know, the capital is covered by a grant. That that two hundred and sixty dollars, the brunt of that is Tangle Wild, and there's a grant for Tangle Wild that's carried over. As we get closer to the end of the year, I get back with each department head and totally comb through all the grants and all the capital projects. That's one of the biggest reason, reasons why the budget changes from July to September is because at that point we have a better idea of what is going to carry over, what is not going to carry over, what grants have been awarded. You know, we're closer to the end and we can be more precise. I agree. Question? Sir. Sir, Mr. Lavo. 49.59. 4959. Come out 1718, and we go from 4400 to zero. That was one of the things that she offered up. But you got it covered in a different way? Ms. Angie would like to come to the microphone.
That particular line item is assistance that we give to youth organizations. And I made the first cut because we're expending more money over the, for the rentals of the portalettes at those parks. So it went down initially from 10,000 to the 4,400. Mm -hmm. I took the rest of it out of 4,400 because the department has used it in a couple past years for playground improvements. So it's something that the entire county benefited from as opposed to just particular groups. And if, if we were in dire straits for something that we could certainly revisit something, but that's where the least impact was going to be. Youth organization support. I guess portalettes qualify. <laughs> well, yes, it does when you have about Pretty 600 sure. kids out there running around. I'll pick it <laughs> <laughs> Use the bathroom. It's yeah. kind of odd. <laughs> I think I see your, uh, your theory. <laughs> all right. That's, that's all. It just well, the pool's still intact, and that's a good <laughs> yeah. thing because I'm getting a lot of uh, good reviews on the sharks. Is that? Yeah, the, yeah. the sharks are swimming like fish. So. Well, that was one of the things that we talked about recommending we close was the pool, but it was uh, discouraged. <laughs> yes, it was. Library budget. There's not really anything earth shattering to talk about here. Give us just a moment, please. Certainly. You know, on um, rentals and leases, 44-01, looks like that went from a year to date actual Never mind, I answered my own question. Did come down a little bit, but I see what you're talking about. <coughs> All right. I'm good. Okay, Ms. Popel. Ag extension. Now we're waiting to hire a new Ag agent or part. Uh, we did get an email yesterday or today, today that that is in the works. Okay. Um, I funded the. You funded. I it. mean, I didn't cut the position just because it had a vacancy. Right. We share that with other counties too. And the university. Care. And the university of. Yeah, IFAS supplies fifty percent of the salary. I believe so. Okay. Um, w which opening do we have there? Uh, March. Oh, yes, Mark Warren. Okay, all right. Um, Sharon did say if we had to cut her budget anywhere, Hastings, and I cut it. Now, wait a minute. You did cut it, the whole amount. Down to zero. So, that was completely voluntarily? $45,000? I think the agreement expired, so it just would have been ongoing after the end of the agreement. I hope we research that through. I know we have reoccurring fund at the legislative level. Um, and then this obligation, I think this obligation might have been tied into that. The notes I had now, I don't have any references for my notes, but the notes I have said last year was last year. It could be. It's been a while. But I, I know that we were obligated somehow with that. And uh, if you want to put it back, it can come out of the 240 we found. No, if it's ended and this is a year to say we need to, it was for crop diversification and a bunch of other things we were sharing with the Tri-County area at the Ag Station. Flagler pulled out of it la uh, last year. It's got to be ended then. Yeah. We didn't hear. All right. Well, that's Just a good move. Just make sure we're sharing that it is. Uh, I agree. Okay. We're on the last page. Unless I really screwed up, this should actually be what they asked for. Uh, the sheriff less 300,000, um, but the capital projects 
less the roof that doesn't need to be replaced in the BPP fund, although I, I don't think I'd, I'd have to look to see if I added that line in the BPP fund, but the BPP has room for it. So this, ni this 19,272 is what the sheriff requested? Mm -hmm. It's right. less 300. Less 300,000. So you're reducing the 19,272 less 300,000? No. No, that reflects. That this reflects the 300,000 300, deducted. Okay. Oh, wait a minute, that's separate. All right, so our, our the, the roofing. Yes. Request. Yes. It, it doesn't reflect in his budget at all because that's our, our building. It's, well, he's been paying maintenance, but regardless, the roof's under warranty. Right. And we're paying for the repair. Okay. But it still was substantially less than what we expected. We thought we were going to put a whole roof up there. And instead, it's coming out of this year's budget, and it represented about 180 of the 300,000. So he's got about $120,000 in BPP funds. I can't remember whether I added that line or not, but there's over a million dollars of contingency in BPP. So it's in BPP. For that roof repair. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. And, and, he was eking that out of his budget. That whole 300, the sheriff was, was eking capital that they were just hoping to be able to afford from savings. It wasn't, you know, hidden or anything. Well, I know it's all right, or Denise would be already at the podium. <laughs> oh, Denise and I have spoken about this. <laughs> Look at that face. Right Commissioner Gotti, you had a question? Yeah, I did have a question on uh, this uh, 581-91-15, just curiosity, what, what is that column? The transfer to the transportation fund? Yes, ma'am. That is where we're not giving the transportation fund any general fund money this year here. Now, I won't tell you that we're not giving them any at all because in the state shared revenue line, we have for years given $375,000 of our state shared revenue to the transportation fund. Now, we don't have to do that, but you walk a fine line because when you start looking at all of the allowable uses of gas tax, there are some administrative costs that are not allowable uses of, ga uses of gas tax. And by putting that 375 in state shared revenue into the transportation fund, we ensure that we aren't ever going to be questioned about our use of gas tax. And I started this budget out not giving them any transfer and not giving them the 375. And A, I couldn't balance. And B, it is good insurance. So I put it back. So they, they, they are getting $375,000 of state shared revenue, but I was able to balance their budget so far without putting any general, other general fund money in. Where will they make up the $410,000? Well, as you can see, I cut them from over a million to 400 and something last year. And this year I cut them back. Um, they were building fund balance. Okay. And I was able to use fund balance last year and I will be able to use fund balance this year to balance their budget. So we won't be cutting projects or services. Road materials is down a little bit, but road materials was, has been used all year this year as a bucket to borrow money from to pay for other things. Okay. Okay. Well, he's in the room too, and he didn't jump up screaming yet, so we'll see. <laughs> I sent him his budget a few days ago. Well, I don't think it's changed materially since I sent it to him. Right. 
commissioners, any questions for us? Well, I, I do notice that the Putnam County School Board here, particularly Miss Odom, she didn't come to be entertained this afternoon. So, Well, if you'll hang on a minute, there's going to be a public comment right now, and I'm going to let her go ahead and speak. I have two blue cards here. So, Miss Odom, mm -hmm. if you'll come to the podium. You can all come up. <laughs> yeah, y'all might as well all come up. Yeah. yeah. Now, Kathy Jorgensen has filled out a card. Yeah. I'll just remember to get into the microphone. Good. Nikki, thank you very much. Nikki. Tony, I have Nikki's card too. So, okay, good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Rhonda Odom, and I'm the Chief Financial Officer of the Putnam County School District. I'm here today to ask for your consideration of the school district as you build your budget, as you finalize it for fiscal year 17 18. Uh, the district, too, has been going through tough financial times. Um, for the last seven years, we've been eating into our fund balance, and um, that's just to keep meet our student needs, to uh, keep our personnel employees, and to get our bills paid. We're getting closer and closer to that 3% that is man mandated by statute, and um, we're doing everything in our power to keep from falling below that, because if we do, uh, sanctions will come to the district. We've recently had one school district in the state that was taken over by the state because they were below that fund balance and now they they are lo looking at being the first charter district of the state we're doing everything in our power not to hit that three percent mark uh, we are well into our budget process for 1718 and we've cut over two million dollars from our operating expen expenses to try to staunch you know that steady decline we close we're closing down a week at christmas we're, we close the solution centers we uh, had departments and schools to take a 5% reduction in their budget of their discretionary funds. We adjusted our staffing formula and funding and putting uh, personnel out to the schools, district level positions. That was the biggest uh, cut that we did as they were vacated, people retiring. We are not filling them and other district level people are taking over those duties. Um, we had a couple of our categoricals where we received funds from the state that tell us exactly what we have to do with them, that we're spending more than we were taking in. So we made them match revenue and expenditures instead of the general fund picking that up. And that also uh, cut some staff that way. Um, one thing that uh, I want you to be aware of is that the legislature, they've again lowered our required local effort millage, uh, bringing over a million dollars less into our operating fund this year than last year. As a school district, without the vote of the general public, um, we cannot increase our millage over the required local effort rate that is set by the legislature. Other taxing authorities uh, have the ability to set their millage rates. We do not. Um, our total millage rate this year that's required local effort, a discretionary and a capital outlay, outlay is it 6.359 mils versus your 9.845 mils. So you'll see with the millage rates we bring in, uh, you bring in about 1.5 in local property taxes more than we do. Um, another voter allowed alternatives is we can ask for a penny or a half penny sales tax, but the county of course has the one cent discretionary sales tax since 2002 and the school district is not participating in that. That being said, um, we, you know, we would love to be able to do that too, but only 12 counties have a higher sales tax rate than we do. 11 have 7.5% and one Liberty has 8%. Uh, we are in the normal range at 7% with 45 of the other counties and many of those counties, that additional penny sales tax is for the school district, not for the county with your better pay place plan. Um, Another thing that's affecting us, our required contribution to the state of Florida retirement system is going up that year. That's going to cost us, and we just found this out when we had the extended session, special session. That's going to cost us over $200,000, and we've also been notified by Florida Power and Light that they're increasing their rates, and that's going to be about a quarter of a million dollars for the school district. So our $2.2 million in cuts that I just talked about will barely keep us level. All this to say that we, too, are hurting financially and we don't have the options uh, to increase our revenue in other ways. And as the county's largest employer, uh, we even lack the ability to give raises, which, and we haven't done so in years, 
uh, and that plays heavily against teacher and employee morale. We have a, a built-in small step into our salary range for teachers, and they've been getting that. It's $869 a year, it, um, and that was done because of a requirement by the state to uh, implement performance pay. Uh, now to the purpose of me being here today. I'm sure you all know what it is. Um, I received an email from Ms. Popple on Monday, July 3rd, informing me that the county government's budget is revenue challenged and that she will not be including the transfer of the paramutual funds that the county receives to the school district as has happened in the past. I, of course, expressed immediate concerns and um, asked that we could talk about it. And um, we've been receiving that revenue streams for as many years as I can recall, and I've been in with the district over 21 years. Um, and as I knew today was your last budget review committee meeting and the budget will be presented to you um, on Tuesday, July the 11th. I wanted to make a plea to please consider the status of the school district and include that $200,925 monies to the school district as has been done many years past. As mentioned earlier, we're well into our budgeting process and we rely on that revenue stream. And I do feel like it's unfair to come at the 11th hour and tell us that it's not going to be done this year. Um, DOE provides a revenue code for that revenue stream to school district. It's from paramutual wagering. It's considered, uh, they worded it as a minor state funding source collected by the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulations. Uh, there's $29.9 million that's divided equally among the 67 school dis uh, counties, I'm sorry and um, in accordance with section 212.20 of Florida statutes. That allocation is to the counties and the wording says it may share the funds with school districts. And I know uh, in 1971, the legislator put a cap of 446,500 to each county, you all get an equal amount. And the county has been actually sharing exactly 45% of that with the school district for 200,925 annually. And like I mentioned earlier, our resources are limited without the ability to raise additional funds through increased millage or sales tax. We're begging for your consideration to consider sharing those paramutual funds with us as you have in the past. We rely heavily on it and uh, cannot truly take another hit to our general funds at this late time. Um, I ask that you please make a choice that's best for Putnam County for our students and our teachers and include this transfer in your budget this year and we would be happy to accept the funds from the, the Zika funds from the budgeted expenditures of your um, <laughs> mosquito fund that you freed up $240,000. So yeah. I'm going there kinda, for that. That's the low so hanging fruit right now. That's where go. I want to go with that. And I would, you know, we throw ourselves on your mercy and beg that you please include that again this year. And I'll turn it over to two of my board members. Thank you, Ms. Odom. We appreciate it. Thank Ms. You. Jorgensen. Hi, Kathy Jorgensen school board member. First of all, thank you for letting us speak to you today. Um, beg is a good word. I'm here to beg. You know, it takes a village to raise up a child, and, and we in the education business need help from everyone in Putnam County, including the county commission. To, to withhold this money from us now at this point wouldn't be helping. It would actually be hurting education in Putnam and we want to lift Putnam up and the way to do that is to improve the education. We certainly can't do that if everybody keeps taking our money away and really we're getting hit from all over and we're begging you not to hit us also. Thank you. Thank you Ms. Jordan. Ms. Cummings. Hi, Vicki Cummings, District 1 School Board. Um, <clears throat> maybe from a different perspective of the larger the largest employer of the county and i look at it from 84 percent of our our 80 million dollar budget is on salaries and so it's something that i keep thinking about growing our county growing our county we try so hard to get gp and jobs and everything we do and so this would take an actual five jobs from teachers and this is i mean i know that seems pretty small but when you think about families moving here taxes living in this county and people that we try so hard to get to stay in this county and, and employ and to give them a way to live um, that's a lot of money and again it's just past practice I keep thinking about you know for the last 21 plus years this money's just been you know so I guess this is the 
we've had several budget workshops as you have too and I know it's so so difficult so it's just a timing thing I think if it was something um, that was planned I know that we've had several conversations about next year's budget from the state and and Rhonda keeps giving us oh my gosh you got to prepare you got to prepare so we're already preparing for next year's state budget so this being done in the truly 11th hour when we have our first budget hearing July uh, 24. 24th so have, we've had we've had several workshops it's just it's not possible we've done everything we can to cut our budget so this would really hurt immensely so again I appreciate you listening I know it's a hard job and I don't envy you at all but thanks for uh, considering that money that we would maybe continue to get thank thanks. you Commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, we will take that into consideration and uh, we're not done yet. So, yeah, and Mr. Cernsey uh, got me at July 4th, trust me, <laughs> when it's 100 degrees weather. Yeah, he, did say he, would, he asked us to come, he's in Tallahassee or he would have been know. here. I know, he so. told me that and I appreciate okay. it, but yes. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Looking at you, Ms. Popel. Shall we talk about insurance? Yeah, that's what we're here for. Well, let me wait before we go there. Is there any other public comment that anyone would like to make that did not have a chance to fill out a blue card? All right, seeing none, we'll go on to the next topic then, and our health insurance county contribution. Kills and trees this year. <laughs> Keeping pop orders in business. We are. We're spurring the economy on. <laughs> want that piece of paper, don't you? <laughs> We're going to take a recess for three minutes while everybody gets their packets together. All right, three minutes is up. Maya went fast. Do what? I said Maya went fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to reconvene the meeting for July 7th. I've given you four scenarios. One of the scenarios, scenario two, July 5th, 2017, is just a recapitulation of this scenario I recommended the previous week. Um, the budgeted number varies slightly. It had to do with the pro uh, formula problem I had. It leaves us with a 32,539 shortfall, but I did show it in a different manner. I showed it where I showed the effect to the board, the clerk, the property appraiser, the sheriff, and the supervisor of elections based on what they budgeted and the costs. 
Now these are, if I'm not mistaken, these are budgeted positions. If these positions yes. don't fill, then that number might not be reality, a real number. We have to budget insurance right. for our budgeted positions. So you can't tie budget to actual, and you can't tie budgeting for the general fund to budgeting for the insurance fund. Since we're trying to make a general fund decision on millage, as I explained at the workshop, I boiled this down to the budgeted employees in the general fund. Right. Uh, 179.4 board, 26.4 clerk, 21 property appraiser, 197 sheriff, and six supervisor of election. But you're going to bill for actual positions filled in those departments. Well, I'm not going to bill, but at least that's not how we've done it in the past. What we are expecting is for each filled position to receive the life insurance and admin costs fee each month for each filled position plus the employer share and the employee share of each selected insurance, not some budgetary average like we've done in the past. Right. And that but way our insurance fund will remain whole. We'll never have an insurance shortfall because the admin fee covers the life insurance that we're paying. And then, of course, if the employee elects additional life insurance, then that also needs to be remitted. But this, right. is, this covers the in life insurance that we pay for, the costs in the insurance fund that aren't covered by premiums, the vision covers the part of the benefit that we're offering, and then the employee deduction covers the employee's share, as with dental, and as with each tier of each of the three health insurance plans. So if, if we're getting the exact employer portion and the exact employee portion in, and then we're paying it out to the respective vendors, it ought to net to zero. <laughs> exactly. Okay. This isn't, there's no profit built into this. No, I, I got it. Yeah. Okay. So, so to be clear, this, this first scenario two, seven, five, 2017 is, is, is close to identical to what was presented on, on Monday. Um, and it, it gets us to very close to the budgeted figure of three million three hundred fifty thousand six hundred forty dollars. It's a shortfall of thirty-two thousand five thirty-nine. So that's really the one that that was creating a lot of issues on Monday. So so we've we've come up with a a couple more scenarios. That Stacy and I sat down and worked through these, um, and she'll present those now. Okay. Or you can. I mean, the first one is. Um, the core employee rates are equal to the FY17 rates. The buy-up employee rates are equal to the FY17 rates. Are you on scenario 1A? 1A. I am. Yeah, you've got to tell us where you are. 1A. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. We got 1A, 2A, and 3A. Right. So and I'm going to take them in that order. Okay. 1A. Okay. The first one. Down in the lower left, that's exactly what I was saying. I was actually reading it to you. Um, core employee rates equal to FY17 rates. Buy-up employee rates equal to FY17 rates. Core plus employee rates are an average of the core and buy-up employee rates. We made the assumption in all three of these scenarios that 80% of our employees move from buy up to core plus and 25% of our employees like the the extra things that are being offered in core plus and move up from core to core plus 
we, we had to make some kind of assumption to capture a cost. But the only thing different in the core plus, from my understanding, 30, 5302 would be to 5301. Both 5302 and 5301 are going to have the imaging uh, product installed on that. And the only other thing would be the uh, brand, brand prescription drugs. And so then the buy-up has the out-of-network. Okay. And then the, there's a difference in as far as some of your specialists, um, whether it's a flat fee or a percentage. Okay. Okay. But the, com the complaints we were getting was brand prescriptions and imaging was the complaints we were getting. And that's why the core plus. So that, okay, I got it. As you see here in scenario one. One A. One A. Keep me straight. Um, there is no difference in cost. It's the exact same employee contribution. If you go to Core Plus and you compare the employee contribution to the buy-up plan, but you've moved to the Core Plus plan, you actually save money. And then if you stay at the buy-up plan, there's no additional cost to the employee. But when everything's said and done, that's going to cost an additional $586,012. Kind of goes without saying that this is not the one I'm recommending. Moving to 2A. In this scenario, the core employee rates are equal to the fiscal year 17 rates. The core plus employee rates are equal to the FY17 buy-up rates, and the buy-up rates are 16% higher than the core plus rates, so the buy-up employee rates are marked up at the same 16% differential. So, Someone could move, an employee could move from 5302 to 5301 to the core plus plan and not see an increase in premium. No, no. That they won't see an increase if they move down from the current buy-up plan to the core plus plan. Yeah, I got that, but if they come from core plan up, I'm not seeing a monthly difference there. That's because it's compared against buy-up. It's not gotcha. compared against okay. core. Yeah, okay. if you actually look in the monthly column there, all the way to the yellow, all the way to the left, the yellow furthest to the left, gotcha. you'll, you'll see those figures that there are increases between those two. 187.37 versus nothing, 442.52 versus 176, and so on? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like I said, this is assuming 80% move from buy-up to core plus, 25% move from core to core plus. This scenario costs 366,630. Moving to 3A, in this scenario, the core employee contribution rates are equal to fiscal year 17. And then we took that resulting county contribution and made the county contribution the same for the core plus plan and the same for the buy-up plan and let the chips fall where they may. Rate minus that contribution equals employee contribution. Again, we compared core against current year core, no increase. Core plus plan against current buy-up 
costs, that'd be a rate decrease, and uh, buy up varying amounts of increases depending on what level you're at. This would also cost a little over $366,000. Scenario 2A and 3A are within 120 some odd dollars of each other. It's just two different ways of looking at spreading costs. Which one do you recommend? Well, really realistically, right. 2A for me, but 2A or 3A. But I, I think the 2A is a better. In 3A, the county doesn't care what plan you're on because the cost is the same to the county. That's really the difference. But where the county is, fair. where the county is making the same contribution, no matter whether it's the core plan, the core plus plan, or the bio plan, the county's contribution to employee, employee spouse, employee child, family remains the same across the board. So <clears throat> any movement between core, core plus, and buy a plan will have no impact upon the, upon the amount that the county is, um, is contributing. So um, three, three A is, um, gives the county a little more security in knowing ultimately um, what it's gonna cost the county. Um, Whereas 2A has some and unknown, well, based upon movement between plans. The, the benefit- The gambling on 3A? No, the benefit, <laughs> neither one of them is a gamble. The benefit to 2A is it's kinder to employees, and should the majority of our employees move to the Core Plus plan, it, the, the single contribution saves us money. The, Employee plus spouse contribution saves us money. The employee plus child contribution saves us money. And the family contribution costs us a little money if they're coming from core and saves us a little if they're coming from buy up. So conceivably, it could be a win if there's more movement than what is forecast. Have our constitutional officers seen these? This is uh, right now. Stacy and I are the only ones that have seen this before right now. Okay. I wouldn't give them to them before I gave them to you. Well, <laughs> yeah. I know, but it's been such a, a trying time with this, and we don't want to hurt any employees. And with an, any of these scenarios, uh, for example, the 2A, we'd need to increase the board's general fund spread throughout the departments by 131.791. The clerks actually, because of his ratios, he'd lose what, yeah, $1,800. I saw him doing the, happy dance over there. Um, the property appraiser, we'd have to give another 28,000, the sheriff another 197,000, and the supervisor another 11,000. That's, that's what puts us at the 366. And of course, this is a scenario based on estimates. In most cases, because of attrition, none of us every, ever fully spend our insurance budgets, but we have to budget something. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Clerk, do you want to use your microphone? There you go. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, if you could go over that uh, part you mentioned prior to that last couple of sentences about the additional contribution from each of the constitutional officers. If you look over to the right-hand side. Yep. Okay. I have, based on the assumption that, well, let me even back up from there. First, I figured out how many employees were paid out of the general fund. Then I took... Uh, 
the percentage of employees that were in each level of the core plan from each office and each level of the buy-up plan from each office. Then I made the assumption that 25% of the core would move to core plus, staying in that same single to single, family to family, um, and that 80% of the buy-up people would move up to core plus for the savings. Again, all other things being equal. Then I took it over, multiplied it out to figure out what the county cost was. Then I added in 1990 per person per month for dental and 408 per person per month for vision and 2281 per person per month for life insurance and admin costs. Got a total, subtracted what was budgeted for those FTEs and came up with a difference based on this assumption. So the pluses and minuses are just how we'd have to distribute the money to come to the 366-630. You have, have a larger amount of people that are take single and less families. Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, sir. Any other questions? So your recommendation is the 3A and that take the 2A, I'm sorry, and that takes all the, that pretty much puts us on firm footing. We just have to come up with $366,630. The clerk sees no increase in a reduction and the other constitutional officers see some sort of, so I guess the question begs an answer, can, is there room in the budgets for these increases or does the county commission has to find the $366,000? And I guess that's the big purple elephant in the room. Is that it, it equates to a little over 0 0.1 mills, not taking into consideration the $240,000 fine. Right, yeah. right, right. And the other items that we might be looking at coming into it. But they, they need to go back to them. They're their respective departments today with some number that they can work with. They've been I have to leave here with a decision on insurance so that I can bring you a balanced budget on and Tuesday. And we're not leaving until we, okay. yeah, so. And maybe, maybe now's a good time to, if. Yeah. I'll open it up to the constitutional officers that would like to come up and speak. Ms. Myers, please. Just come on up. And it really is just a minor, Linda Myers. Um, Stacy Papel. Yes. So I heard you say, and my brain's just not wrapping around this, that, that 2A was going to cost the county less than 3A. It could. But the short, well, just using your numbers, no, though. No, just using my numbers, no, it's not. No. Okay, because your numbers actually show 3A as the lowest between the two of them as the lowest cost. You, all things being, all things being equal, equal, then 3A is 120 some odd dollars less than 2A, but I, I'm just I saying. think more people would move. I see, okay. So, um, so using your numbers though, when you were saying one was less than the other, I did not pick up that you were going away from this and I making was. other assumptions that aren't on here. I was. So besides these assumptions you were actually making some verbal assumptions too i was thank you so much that wasn't clear to me and i may be the only one in the room but thank you why is uh, the tax collector not listed on the the tax collector is fee based right, we don't give based. the tax collector money out of the general fund we get money from the tax collector yeah i know okay mr parker you're working your way to the front Okay. Bear with me for a moment. It's fine. I 
I guess just a couple <coughs> questions, observations for Ms. Papel. Um, <clears throat> this is with employees contributing, single employees contributing nothing on the 5302 plan, correct? Okay. Um, <clears throat> just some quick numbers about probably if you collected $20 a month from single employees on both plans, in addition to what they're currently shown here, you would generate about another 73,000 in uh, revenue. Now that's not based on your, um, your numbers, it's based on the 532 positions that we have. Um, that I had previous, so I didn't have, I wasn't privy to the mix of your numbers. I know we still have 21 employees, but some of the other officers didn't have any, or You must had not less have got the piece of paper I passed out at the workshop you were at. Correct. And we're using 430 um, for the number of employees that are um, in the general fund. But it's still taking into account that those single employees pay nothing. Right. Okay, but so I was instructed to do it this way. Oh, I understand. I'm just informing the board, you know, and clarifying that particular point. Okay. Mr. Parker, um, how many single employees do you have down there at the property appraiser office? How many single yeah. employees? Do you know that right offhand? So we have two on the 3559 plan. And six on the 5302 plan. Okay. All right, so that's just a point. So another question I have is, um, you've budgeted for $25,000 excess fees from the property appraiser. I think that's correct. I would have to check, but that doesn't sound unreasonable. Okay. Any amount over that that we project, could that go to offset this 366000 It's... Are you telling me that you're going to give me more than $25,000 and I should increase that revenue number? Yes. Why don't we just take it out of your budget? Well, because we budget certain things expecting a normal operating season, okay? So we lose an employee, okay? Um, and so then we generate some excess fees in that manner, okay? And historically, I think if you look at all the excess fees of the clerk and the tax collector and the sheriff that we will easily meet that 366000 But if you're guaranteeing that you're going to give it back as revenue, why don't we take it out? This is not a guarantee. This is a one-time deal, okay? But and so we may be sa facing the same problem next year or, or be re-looking at the same issue, but I'm saying that we could, in, we'll, I, went, I met with our accountant earlier today and because we have some empty positions and because we don't work overtime, you know, supervisory staff works extra hours and nights and weekends so we get the job done, but it's not costing the county anymore. So we fill those empty positions with supervisory personnel. So what I'm saying is this year, I know that I'm going to have in excess probably around $125,000 instead of $25,000. And uh, historically, if you look back at your figures in your spreadsheet, you'll see that other constitutional officers do generate historically more than what you know, you've budgeted for. So um, if I were the commission, at least this year, uh, and I can't speak for Tim or Linda or, or Gator, but I would think that the 366000 would not be of a major concern for me, okay, knowing that there's going to be 
some excess funds coming from the constitutionals. If the board wants to direct me to increase revenue lines for the constitutionals based on assurances that you're going to give us that much revenue, I would do it. Well, of course we would. Yeah, <laughs> we just heard from Mr. Parker. That's right. But we hadn't heard from the others. Right. So I think on Mr. Parker's line, yes. Now, how much do we budget for from, so we budget income coming in every year but we budget low. So what did we budget for this coming? We budgeted 25000 okay. for the property appraiser, and he's saying to add $100,000 to add that. Add 100000 to it, as Mr. Parker suggested. Do you agree, Commissioner? There you go. To me, still, it, I mean, unless there's a problem because you've passed your budget with the state or something, it makes more sense to not give you a hundred to give back to us. Well, it is kind of semantics, I guess, when you when it boils right down to it. The state approves our budget, so we approve a normal operating budget, expecting to be fully staffed. And so, when we have a situation like we have currently, where we're not fully staffed, then we have that potential excess fees. Under normal circumstances, fully staffed, we would not have that. So we would not ask our budget to be reduced. Added as an income line. Okay. As the board directs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Parker. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Yes. Thank you very much. There's a hundred of it. Anybody else next? <laughs> See, Sheriff Deloach is making his way up with his notebook. <laughs> <laughs> If that we were the case, we'd probably all be this. sitting Anybody in the back have row. a hat? I don't have a hat, so, you know. Let me just set this aside, and along the same lines of what Mr. Parker said, I can tell you that uh, based on what our initial forecast does, we expect to return about $300,000 to the BOCC, minus the one fifty dollars in revenues the county expects back. If you can return that uh, other $150,000 to us, I think we can at least get closer to that number. Well, well, did you want us to give you 150 more so that you'll give us 150 no, more back? No, he's saying he's going to give back 150 more well, than I'm, what you budgeted. Oh, okay. I, what I'm saying is I'm returning 100, I expect to return 150,000 more than what you've budgeted for as revenues. Okay. So increase his revenue line to another $150,000. Are you pretty sure? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm fairly confident, yes. I like this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I like how this is. Thank you. Now Stacey, that's I, I have to ask you, do you feel comfortable legally budgeting that amount? Um, they're on record. They're on TV. They're on tape. <laughs> and the board is directing me to do this, so I do not feel like I'm violating anything. Okay. Well, here comes Denise. Now, I just, I just want to be clear that we'll, <laughs> Denise, sit down, Denise. we'll expect that back to help offset this uh, shortfall on Plan 2A of 197325 Oh, yes, sir. That's part of that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Which, which scenario are you looking at? He's looking at 2A scenario, oh. the 197325 Yeah, it In would fact, probably I feel confident. Help. I feel so confident now that uh, if, if it would help, I can go ahead and return the 300000 $300, right now. No, no, I need that this year. This is next year we're talking about. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. I'll return it now in anticipation of using it for next year. We can do it. As a carry forward. We need it. Take it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Is everyone clear? Yes. But, you're right. not, but at the end, you're not going to give another 150 at the end of. No, just this give us. He, ha he has to give everything he has left at the end of Great this year. Deal. You're giving 300,000 now. Yes. Got it. Thank yes. you. Yes. Mr. Chairman. Now, you bring up a, a good point. So, just to be clear, the board will not expect another $150,000. No, will not. This okay. is 300,000 one time, 150,000 now. 150,000 for the fiscal year 17-18. Okay, but, understood. But, but, but yes. you lost me there. 
He's given a hundred. He's given three hundred thousand dollars today. Okay, then this is not increase his budget. This is increase the carry forward. Exactly, of a hundred and fifty thousand because you were expecting a hundred and fifty thousand net to be refunded for next fiscal year. You can do what you want with it. I don't care where you put it as long as we get it back to help offset the insurance cost. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, based on two A, you're going to get one hundred ninety seven three twenty five added to your budget. Okay. 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 We good? Are you yes. good? Okay. You okay. good, Denise? Good. Sheriff, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Mr. Chairman. Section three. Before the sheriff leaves the podium, um, I know he has expressed uh, concern over the last few months about um, <clears throat> the ability of his employees to be able to infor, afford uh, an insurance plan, and he is expressed several times his concern about um, his employees will have to seek other employment if the right choices aren't made. And my question is, is do these two scenarios or the one of them uh, satisfy your concerns uh, that you've been expressing? I can't say that they necessarily satisfy what, uh, what our employees are looking for. Uh, the only thing that I can tell you is that we're going to work hard and be very diligent about uh, saving every penny that we can. And I expect that I will adjust my employees' rates uh, perhaps at a, a different level than uh, what Ms. Papel has proposed here okay. in anticipation of uh, losing them if, if we don't do otherwise. No, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And then my, my second uh, I guess a more of a comment since Tim Parker's uh, offered $100,000 he's offered $300,000 today looks like we've covered the shortfall so Linda and I are looking pretty good <laughs> <laughs> no no and, and you we want to and we certainly want to thank our uh, whoa whoa brother of you didn't do you didn't do the math right the 150000 and the 72, so the 100. The I heard 300 and 100. I know, so. but that's. Well, let's, let's be clear. Uh, 150,000 of that is uh, expected revenues the county uh, expects back at the end of the year. So it's right. only a gain of 150. I, got, I, I know that. Yes, a net gain of 150. I got the math on that. Okay, perfect. And but I, I will commit to you that the clerk's office is looking at their expenditures, um, and we anticipate that we will do better than we did last year. I'm reluctant to give you a number today. That's fine. But as we get closer uh, to the time, we anticipate that there will be additional uh, revenue that we're returning also. Because all year we've been trying to really be tight with uh, the revenues that are um, uh, allocated to us um, because we have kind of knew this issue was really coming and we were trying to be good stewards all year during this current budget year to help offset the additional deficit uh, in revenues next year. Okay. So um, I think all of us have really been doing that. We've talked about this in our meetings uh, with the other constitutional officers that you know there is a forecast out there that wasn't rosy, and one way to offset that is to start saving now. So uh, we'll, we will make that uh, effort to do much better than we've done in the past. I'd, I'd rather not hear a promise if you can't make one. I understand. <laughs> I was just hoping he was very benevolent right now, <laughs> but that's okay. All right. Um, so the only other is Mr. Overturf here. No, he had somewhere else he had. Okay, to be. that's fine. Um, all right. Based on that, then um, tax collector. Tax collector is already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, we, 250 of it. All right, so we need to, the board, we have vetted this, and, and again, thank you to everyone who has really spent countless hours at night, mornings, going over this stuff. It's been very I trying. But uh, the chair will entertain a motion from the board about the health insurance county's contribution. Here. You want it in a way of scenarios? Yeah, put the scenario, um, whatever scenario, plus the comments of the constitutional. Well, that's not necessary. We got no, just page. the scenarios, but the um, 
Scenario 2A is what we've all honed mm -hmm. in on, correct? Correct. Yeah. So I'm going to motion that uh, structure be moved forward. We have a proper motion by Commissioner Liable to accept Scenario 2A as the county health insurance contribution. Then I'll second. We have a proper second by Commissioner Goddard. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign, the ayes have it. Woo. A long time coming. Thank you very much. All right, we've already done public comment. Commissioner comments to my left, starting with. I have several more things for you. <laughs> it's not on my agenda. <laughs> Go ahead, really quick. Would you like to talk about BPP? We're yes. here. Let's go ahead and do it. Yes, ma'am. Now, does that take into account of the things that we talked about today that we possibly shift over or no? This is just a... No, but they can be absorbed in. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. This is a quick and dirty list. The principal and interest will be paid off in FY18, and the debt service is less than a full year's debt service. In the past, the debt service has been, this is roughly two thirds of the normal debt service. The water fund's gonna lead, need a little more help, 600,000 instead of 550. I have 500,000 plugged in for grant matches in the roads and drainage fund. That's a, a swag. I have a million that I haven't allocated yet because I know there's, I know you, Commissioner Harvey, have a, a list out there of different things and well, it's not just my list. I've been keeping No, no, track. you've yeah. just been keeping track of right. different promises. It's not your list. It's not your wish list. It's just a <laughs> list of different things that have been discussed. But I can't call you at 11 o'clock at night when I'm still at work to say, what was on that list? Um, you could. I'm just not. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I couldn't. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I yes, could, uh, please, let's tag that, please. I'd like to see an itemized list of what those are. Oh, absolutely. This, this can be workshopped. This is just what I've got in there right now so that we'll have a balanced budget. And that contingency is not above the 10%. So, I mean, even if you left it contingency, it's fine. But this way I'm not budgeting in an improper manner. Um, it's just a line item of a million dollars with it's scary. No explanation, yeah. please, yes. I mean, if we cannot yeah. do that, I'd rather not do that. <laughs> Actually, it's just a balance number, but you're right. Because the things no. I don't well, have. Well, I, I don't want it in as contingency I either. Don't have that kind of I don't mind having a contingency in the BPP because we can't spend it unless you authorize it. Right. Okay, well, it's but still, it doesn't reflect well on us. Yeah. All the right. 624565. Is uh, as you'll recall, the external auditors wanted us to come up with a plan for funding the debt that um, BPP is pledged against subsequent to BPP's voter approval. And I discussed with you in a workshop start setting up an escrow account, leaving it in the BPP fund as a reserve. Well, this is that the this water is, project in yes, Spalaka yeah. that the second BPP fund will run out before the pledge runs yes, out. Yes. So we need to create reserves for the funding 
so the auditors don't get upset with that finding again. Well, the, the plan's gonna be for the next 15 years to sock away an equal amount right. each year so that there's enough in the reserve to carry to the end, hoping that by the time we get to the end of this 15 year BPP, or long before we get to the end, the water and wastewater utility is self-sustaining and won't need the money anyway, and it just comes out of the reserve and goes right back into BPP for BPP stuff. And it's fair to say that this could drastically change in as little as 36 months. Yes, it's fair to say Easily. that. We have a grant application right now with the Corps of Engineers and SS $20 million, I do believe. And then, of course, we were just awarded the uh, Paradise Water. Point mm -hmm. for million two million. plus two million dollars. So um, let's hope that happens. Fiber carryover. Yeah. And these numbers will change between July and September. Uh, fire trucks. Does that include the ambulances that were? No. Nope. No, they have their own line. I see it. Public works equipment, dirt to pave, carryover on the road work near GP. I couldn't call press in the middle of the night either, and I wasn't sure, so I just rolled it. Mike Nimitz, no, he's gone. Okay. It's the right number. Is it? It's the right number unless we spend it this year. Okay, right. Or, or part of it this year, then it'll go down. Uh, ambulances. Yeah, that's the right number. Park projects and library projects. I know that needs to be refined, but I just tossed a number in there. It's much smaller than the number that was in there last year, plus I added slash library. Uh, communication. This isn't part of the phased communication system, but there was a request made in the communication fund for some capital needs in communication, and the communication fund cannot afford those capital needs, so I put it here. I rolled the animal shelter money. Can, can we back up just a second? Yes. Can we take the, the description phase one out of it, though? Yes, we and can. Just this maybe is, call it an additional communication request? This, I remember talking about this. This list comes out of my quick and dirty a pivot table. This list isn't what's in the the county <coughs> records. Okay. This is just out of this is this is quick and dirty and rough. All right. Well, it's just misleading okay. if it says phase one because. Okay. But it's communications money. Yes, that would be better. The animal shelter and then the transfer for the jail debt. Eleven million six twenty eight four thirty. Okay, I only have two more things. And this one's maybe good news. How many phases do we have on that communication? Quinn, how many phases on the communication deal? Three or four? What, what, the phase one that you're doing now is the microwave connectivity project. Right. Uh, the next phase of it is the replacement of the consoles and the equipment in the 911 center. Mm -hmm. And then the last phase, which is the largest part of it, is the replacement of the radio system. What you're looking at here is as a result of the first phase, the Tower engineering company went out, looked at Seminoles, the tower we have out there, and said it's not capable of due to age and all that. That is a replacement tower to be able to complete the first part of the, the project. So that's not a I got you. getting the other two phases. Yeah. And when we do get into phase two, it's possible we can use a combination of 911 money as well as BPP. But our communication gaps are completely remedied in the first phase, or is it going to no. take all three? Oh, it takes all three. It, they really become evident in the third phase. 
to right, the so we still have engine. a safety Correct. challenge. And that was why I was coming over there. Gotcha. I had ESPN. We'll work towards it. <laughs> All right. You may recall in a workshop I sprung on you that solid waste fees might go up a lot more than is shown on this piece of paper. They're going to go up right now. I mean, this could change by a dollar or so when I start plugging in the insurance numbers. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think by more than a dollar. But right now it appears that they will only increase by $6. That's good news. It's very good news. And I was saving it for towards the end in case you were not happy. <laughs> no, it's not about being happy. It's about being honest and about getting these numbers right. That's what I only about. give you honest. Well, in the past, the general fund had subsidized that, and you're seeing that that's not going to be the case. Not okay. the general fund. Um, Fund no, balance. Fund balance in yeah. the landfill. Yeah, I noticed that we're expecting more tipping fees and recycling income and grants. Good deal. That's good. That is good news. Yeah. More good news or? Well, it's something you asked for. Okay. Something you asked for. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Forecast, let me guess. Very good. You asked me in a workshop how we were going to dig ourselves out of this hole. But to look at it from 20,000 feet. <clears throat> this short report takes um, information from the past five CAFRs, revenue forecasts for this year, Quite honestly, more like trends on the expenditure side because I didn't have time to get down and do a detailed forecast of year end on the expenditure side. And then a trend forecast for the next three years. In it, I used, because I did this over a week ago, I used worst case scenario 10 cap millage for 18 bringing it back to 9.6 in 19, and bringing it back to 9.25 in 20. And we stay in the black. We don't go in the red. Mm -hmm. Does this take into account that our fund balance by resolution, if it goes below the the number, I believe it's $6 million, that we have to have a restoration plan with three years our, of getting it back up? Our fund balance, I don't remember the wording exactly, but if it falls below operating expenditures, I think. It might have to do with the revenues, but for some reason I think it has to do with operating expenditures. But I've read a lot of fund balance policies in my day. But if it falls beneath a multiplier related to our spending, and it very likely will at the end of this fiscal year, then we have to have a plan. Right. This is not an externally imposed requirement. This is an internally imposed requirement. But it requires that we actually have a plan on how we're going to dig ourselves out of the hole. Right. And restore that balance up, right. up to above acceptable level. That was done by a previous board many years ago that had that thought. Well, it's a good policy to have. Very good policy. But it's not like the, what you heard the school board say, that they're going to sweep in and they go below that 3%. Yeah. It's not that no one's sweeping in to do anything. It's just no, our, it's our if we No, if we fall below a certain threshold of fund balance set by yeah. that policy, and we very likely will right. at the end of this fiscal year, then we have to plan on how we're going to get, how we're going to restore 
our fund balance to over the threshold. Okay, the, but does these three-year projections show that any increase in fund balance or just staying consistent? Well, with that? I don't know that it gets us out of the hole, but it, it doesn't put us any further into the hole. So it, we're, we either creep or climb back. It's well, just a trend analysis at 20,000 feet. Hey, good. This is extremely conservative. I see you have no change in the fire tax or the property values to speak of. Which I'm both always could change <laughs> big time, and you don't discuss anything with the industrial complex. No, changes. if there are any windfalls, it's not here. That's and right. we know we have a few things. This yeah, we know we're going to have an increase from GP, even though it's a small one right. for the first five years. We know we're going to have that increase. It's not in here. This is a trend. Right. So it doesn't have that in here. Yeah. This, this is perfect. It's, it's what perfect. you wanted? It's very doable, and what uh, the chairman's concerns are uh, has a good chance of being addressed yeah. by the, by the increase. Properly. Exactly. This, is, this is excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> good, very good job, Ms. Patel. I like Thank the way you laid it out, too. It's easy to read, unlike your insurance stuff. <laughs> Well, I think, the ins I think the insurance finally got Sorry. better by today because everybody was trying to back into, oh, what's going to cost me, what's going to cost you, and so I, I finally know. got I, it on one piece of paper. I'm cutting you, but I commend you. I wouldn't okay. want to do sensitive. that job. I'm not in the least bit sensitive. All right. All right. Thank you again, Ms. Patel, for all that. Is there now, any other papers you have? I need direction. I need direction about the school board. I need direction. Um, I'm assuming that I'm going to take the 240 windfall and the 100 gift and the 150 gift and apply that to the 366. What do you want me to do about the school board? Can we take comments? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, I feel that this board school board the present time is doing a stellar job and if you keep up with state trends and and their funding which is really funky you know especially this year um they have really got challenges i hear them and um you know i don't know how it ever got started that we split this uh you call them racing monies in here, I noticed. <laughs> was that raised or was that what it was? Yeah. Paramutual To me, monies. they're paramutual funds, but in certain places in actually the AS400, our financial system, I've seen racing monies. It took, I had to research hard because I was looking for reasons to support why we were giving the contribution. And finally, none of us could find an interlocal agreement or anything it was just all right well still but I think they're doing a stellar job and you know our education system is tied into our overall achievement too especially economic development and outside businesses looking at us we're all a team and um they they obviously need our help they were here asking today we realized some unintended uh good news today and and if we can share it with the school board i'm for it i really am i want to help them i feel the same way okay then let me tell you what i think i'm going to do and you tell me if you disagree i'm going to subtract the 240 out of expenditures add the 366 to expenditures add the 200 to expenditures put in revenues the 250 from the constitutionals and I'm going to have to balance it by moving the millage up a skosh or we there might be yeah you probably will but there's some other and then line in items between that we can look at. July and September right we right. can look at other things we can cut and try to drive that millage down but I'm going to bring you a budget Tuesday and a millage that's a result of everything we talked about today. Gotcha. That's a good good approach, I feel. I do too. We're yeah, gonna have a lot of opportunity to scrutinize this and bring it down. But for sure. conversation's sake and you building the budget 
we have to move forward with something, and this looks as good as anything I've heard in the last month. Well, and I'd no, it looks way better than anything I've heard. Well, last I'd month. really like to have a smooth Tuesday instead of another contentious week. So, <laughs> and, uh, that, Commissioner Pickens, on uh, average, Mr. Manning, Commissioner Pickens. No, I disagree with um, Chairman Harvey and Chip. Definitely, and I'm sure Buddy does. That we really uh, need to support the school and to take that money from definitely at the eleventh hour. They're talking about with their budget constraints that they have. Um, I think it would be doing the whole county an injustice because they are definitely a piece of the puzzle um, that we're, that will bring this yeah. county up. So, well, and and in fact, like we just said, we could really hurt them. Um, God knows we don't want them to be under that three percent and be swooped down and taken over. So, whatever we can do to partner with our partners is what we need to be about doing. Sorry, Mr. Manning, go right ahead. No, I didn't. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Um, so just kind of, I'm just figuring those numbers in my head. We're looking at like a 0.03-ish increase on that millage, Stacy. Oh, I don't do air math. Oh. <laughs> uh, come on, even when I'm talking, I drop zeros and add zeros. I don't do air I think air we're math. about 100,000 off, right? But no, you don't do air math, so. <laughs> You're be around, you'll bring us something around 9.6. I think it's going to be. Or 9.86 or something. That's, you got to, yeah. You'll bring that to us on Tuesday. Okay. I've got my marching orders. Okay, and may I mention, now you're going to try to get as close to the number that the school board was looking for, correct? I'm just going to put the exact number back great, in. Great, great, great. Um, yeah, because that's as requested, as they say. With the understanding, they may not have as much next year, but at least I'll have that this year. That's up to y'all. Yes. There's one more item we need to discuss, and that's carrying over from this morning's afternoon's lunch hour meeting. <clears throat> what direction would you like us to go? I will say, and this is on the fire MSBU presentation. Um, as you've now seen, you know, in the budget, all, any sort of capital expenditures um, for the, the fire trucks and the ambulances um, are in BPP. Um, I, I don't see um, that there's really any um, impact to, our, to the general fund that would be realized by moving quickly to a fire MSBU this year. Um, so I, it's my recommendation that, that we that we not do that. We can look at it for next year, but I'm not recommending we move towards that this year. It's it's a very tight time frame. We're in a in another situation where everybody's having to hustle um, to try to get something done. I prefer that we take a more meticulous, um, steady pace um, towards a decision like that. But that's up to you all, Mr. Manning. Uh, I, I agree. I, I'll tell you, I. Although, as much as I want to go there, uh, I don't want to rush this thing through. I want to get it right the first time. And um, holding it off for a while would be would make the most sense to me. Uh, Commissioner. Yeah, Mike. Oh, yeah, I agree. Uh, with everything we've had to deal with, with this insurance, and because uh, we, uh, we, we did look at the self-funding, and I think we're going to probably go that route next year. The... Uh, the Fire is, is another avenue that will probably go next year. But with everything that we've had to deal with, I, I think it's best just to let that lie for right now. Commissioner Pickens? Yeah, I agree. Commissioner I Lyle. concur with counsel. Yes. Okay, there's your la is that the last of the last of the last orders for the day? It's the last of my last. All right. Is there any further items to come before the board? Adjourn it before Wait something minute. goes wrong. <laughs> Mr. <Smith>. Please. <laughs> Mr. Smith has a comment to make. Over to your right. Mr. Yep. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you know, a lot of times in these uh, budget uh, adventures, uh, the, it's difficult to make things work. And I was told by a gentleman years ago, we were speaking about the legislative budget process and how difficult it is to understand it and he says you just got to remember it's a process and sometimes you don't know the answers when you start that or the direction but if you stay with the process which you gentlemen did and I want to 
congratulate you and commend you on that. And I also want to uh, thank uh, Stacy Propel. Um, I think when the county administrator duties were lifted off of her, she has really gone to work on this budget. And today was uh, one of the best presentations that uh, I've seen offered on uh, budgets in detail. Uh, now, in fairness to the past 16 years that I've uh, witnessed up here, <clears throat> we would be just presented with a balanced budget and there wasn't a lot of discussion about the building blocks of that. But I think particularly for our two new commissioners to see that it is a process, that there are building blocks to this, there are uh, needs in the community and there are responsibilities that you as commissioners have, uh, it makes uh, you a better body uh, from going through this. And I hope that that is a uh, springboard to um, um, better communication and, uh, and uh, renewed enthusiasm for our county. Uh, I tell you all the time you hear me say is I'm as excited about Putnam County today as I've ever been. We've had some roadblocks, but we're working our way through those. And so for all of you that worked hard, uh, the other constitutional officers, I want to thank them for their efforts and for leading our county. And uh, I see a great future and a bright day for us. And thank you for doing all that on our behalf. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Smith. Commissioner comments, Mr. Lavell. Uh, Mr. Smith just said it wonderfully. <laughs> and, um, I know that you need some rest, and I thank you. It did come in at the end, and Mr. Smith's right. This is the most discussion I've seen a commission myself be involved, you know, although it was at the last day or the last hour, but I felt uh, a part, and I thank you for it. I'm ready to move forward to tweak it now. <laughs> Commissioner Goddard. Again, I want to thank Ms. Papel. I know it's been aggravating working with us. <laughs> Uh, you've had to go back and, and throw away your original plans and, and come up with something else countless times, but I do appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone here. Uh, we're all in this together and we're all working on it together and I'm, I really enjoy it. Thank you. Commissioner Pickens. It's always good to go before Tim Smith says something because <laughs> we can't ever uh, compete with him. But. Uh, he says it so well. Uh, Stacy Propel, thank you so much. Um, I know you put in a lot of hours. And uh, I thank all the, the staff, the constitutional officers, officers and all the department heads for all their work putting their budgets together. It's definitely a, a tough budget year. Uh, the millage rate will be raised, which you never want to do that. Um, but when you look at what it's going to provide our county is uh, you know, uh, the money to provide services and uh, especially for the ones who protect us and provide us with the service that we expect to happen every single day, uh, we will continue to do that. And I do believe the future of Putnam County uh, looks bright and uh, hopefully it'll be the easier process next year. Um, uh, the detailed uh, information that Stacy Papel has um, given the county commission, I think it's uh, over and above what they've gotten in years past. Uh, this is my first budget process. I've enjoyed it. I have learned a lot and uh, look forward to moving forward uh, as a commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to publicly say this, Stacy Papel. thank you for taking on those additional duties. And I know that was a lot to, to put on you and during that time, but it was needed at the time. And we appreciate Mr. Manning now stepping up and doing <coughs> that also. Uh, I do want to thank everyone, our board especially, um, God knows they put up with a lot of meetings that normally hasn't happened in the past. But as Mr. Lavel says, we, we've gotten down into the weeds. Uh, they're going to learn this when they go through their schooling, and they're going to be far better commissioners for it going into the future of the things that we've done here in these past few months. And uh, department heads, thank you. Uh, public, we thank you, and all of our partners out there. You better thank Tony Weaver. I we was thank say, you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with and you. And Tony yeah, Weaver. We really thank Tony Weaver also. <laughs> 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 you know that. Who asked me today, give me an hour between meetings so I could decompress, and she had an hour and 22 minutes. So, yes, we did. And it's Tony, count. we do thank you. Um, if there's no other further business. Mr. Chairman, if I might, just for 30 <laughs> seconds. Yes, sir. Um, I want to thank 
you all as well for your patience through this. I know it's been frustrating because it has been a very difficult budget season. Um, and I know, you know, you, you, you've been told it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and it's going to be hard, and it has been. Um, but you all have been very patient, and I want to thank you for that. And I also want to thank Stacy for, for the countless hours she's been putting in and putting up with um, you all. <laughs> Larry, um, just say um, And me, and for helping me um, just in, in the last, you know, few days um, and the questions I've had for her and sitting down with me and, and the frustration I've put on her as well. Um, and w so I want to thank her for that, helping us get to this point today. Um, and just to remind you all that she's probably got more hours this weekend yet because she's not off the hook till Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you Tuesday then. Thank you, Mr. Manning. And uh, again, if there's no, Ms. Papel, you want to say, okay, if there's no further business, we'll adjourn this meeting. Thank you. Yes.